Hello, in this presentation I will introduce fundamentals uh, of robot kinematics. This is the first introductory video on robot kinematics without going into details about all the math behind robot kinematics, but we will describe some of the ideas of kinematic models. Therefore, the aims of the presentation are to define some of the basic concepts used in robot kinematics such as forward and inverse kinematics or differential models. I will mention different methods for obtaining kinematic models that we will explain in specific videos. Here I only intend to show you how kinematic models should look like for different robot types, without going into the details of all the maths behind. In addition to this, I will also talk about singular robot configurations, specifically the ones of serial manipulators and collaborative robots. Kinematics is a science that studies motion without considering the causes that produce it, that is, the forces that cause it. It only takes into account positions and velocity of the elements. In robotics, kinematics allows to study the movement of robot links with respect to a reference frame. This is an analytical description of the special movement of the end effector in both position and orientation. It allows, therefore, to establish a relationship between the end effector and the joints of the robot as a function over the time, both in position and speed. Kinematics is the basis for understanding how robots move. In a large number of applications where robots do not move at high speeds, kinematics play a fundamental role. However, we must never forget that the real world is a dynamic world and therefore, if we want to control a robot, we will have to consider not only the kinematics aspects but also the dynamic ones. We can distinguish two types of kinematic models, absolute and differential ones. The absolute models are expressed through absolute variables, such as joint angles or joint positions, or the position and orientation of the end effector while in differential models there's a relationship at the level of velocities, whether linear or angular. A forward kinematic model allows to determine the position and orientation of the end effector from joint position values. An inverse kinematic model allows to obtain joint values that we need to uh, apply in order to reach a given position and orientation of the end effector, a target position and uh, an orientation of the end effector. Differential models allow us to obtain a locally linear expression in terms of velocities. The Jacobian matrix is actually derived from the forward kinematic model. We will see this in the next uh, uh, slides. Each of these models can uh, uh, we can have uh, different methods in order to compute them and therefore it is convenient to know all of them. For kinematics has a unique solution and can be obtained from trigonometric equations or, let's say, from the denavid hardeman method. The details of this method are explained in specific videos about robot kinematics, so in, a, in a later videos. Forward kinematics plays a fundamental role to obtain the position and orientation of robots and the factor given some joint values. The inverse kinematics of a robot usually has multiple solutions since there are several configurations uh, that a robot can apply in order to reach the same position and orientation. For the most common robots, an analytical solution of the inverse kinematics is known, but they can produce solutions that are numerically unstable near singular robot configurations. There are methods based on numerical approximations and optimization techniques that allow obtaining numerically more stable solutions using the Jacobian of the robot. Inverse kinematics is used mainly for generating robot movements in the Cartesian space. Differential kinematics, on the other hand, produce a linear transformation of the robot kinematics and is there, therefore it is usually uh, used in kinematic robot control. 
The robot Jacobin can be obtained from the differential geometry methods or also from the, the results obtained by applying the Denabit Hardenberg method, as we will see. Robots can have some singularities. These configurations must be known in advance, so we have to try to avoid them as much as possible, since they imply that the robot will be blocked at some directions. Singularities appear when we try to move the robot in the Cartesian space and the inverse kinematic calculation in this case fails. Singular configurations can cause a speed map degeneration, that is, they cause high joint velocities for small end effector displacements. For instance, a serial manipulator robot has up to eight different configurations. In the interior boundaries of the workspace of each of these configurations, there's a singular configuration. Therefore, changing from one configuration to another implies that the robot must necessarily go through a singularity, which will cause high speeds in some of the robot joints. In these configurations, the range of the robot's Jacobian is, or the rank, sorry, the, the, of the robot Jacobian is less than the number of degrees of freedom, which implies that the, uh, the Jacobian will be poorly conditioned for its inversion and therefore that is the cause for the speed map degeneration. The six degrees of freedom serial manipulated robot uh, that we will usually find in many industrial uh, applications has a workspace defined in R3 times R3 that allows the positioning of the end effector. Joints of this robot are revolute joints, so its configuration space is defined in S6. Forward kinematics is the analytical function that allows obtaining the position and orientation of the end effector from the six joints. This type of robot has an in-like wrist at the point where the axis for five and six intersect. Draw here with a blue dot. This type of wrist allows to simplify the inverse kinematics problem so that it's, it can be easily solved analytically by the coupling the problem. So we just simply use the first three joints to solve a position problem and the last three joints to solve an orientation problem of the end effector. This type of robot can have up to eight possible configurations as a result of the inverse kinematics, eight possible solutions. All of them reaching the same position and orientation of the end effector. However, due to the joint limits, some of these solutions might not be physically achievable, and that's, that's why we discard them. Some of, we can discard some of them. The Jacobian matrix of the robot is obtained from the partial derivatives of the forward kinematics model with respect to Q, uh, that's the robot joints, and this is a 6 times 6 matrix that allows obtaining the end effector speeds from current configuration Q and joint speeds Q dot. The matrix can be singular, which means that at singular configurations the, the rank of this matrix will be less than 6, and therefore that will be somehow implied that there's a direction that it's blocked. This is something we will study later in a different video. Uh, serial manipulated robots have three types of singularities, wrist, elbow and shoulder singularities. Wrist singularity occurs when axes 4 and 6 are aligned as a consequence of the well-known gimbal lock. The singularity of the elbow appears in the change between the elbow up and down configurations, just when the point of the wrist is contained in the plane formed by the axis 2 and 3. And finally, the singularity of the shoulder appears when the point of the wrist passes through the first axis of the, the robot. Collaborative robots, like the one shown in the figure, have a kinematic configuration very similar to this, uh, the, the one shown before, but it has a slight difference from the previous robot. The wrist of this type is not an inright wrist. Axis 6 and 4 have some offset. This implies that the inverse kinematics analytical solution 
is not as straightforward as in the previous case. Anyway, it's, it still has up to eight possible configurations for the same pose of the end effector. For instance, the robot can be configured with the shoulder to the left or right configuration, elbow up, elbow down, and wrist up or down. In a similar way, collective robots also have singularities. In, the, in this case, the wrist singularity occurs when axes 4 and 6 are parallel, while the elbow singularity occurs when axes 2, 3 and 4 are contained in the same plane. The shoulder singularity occurs when the point at which axes 5 and 6 intersect, it is contained in the plane formed by the axes 1 and 2. The workspace of a scatter robot is R3S1, which allows positioning of the end effector as well as controlling the orientation of the tool in, on the set axis. Its forward kinematics is an analytical function that allows obtaining the position and orientation of the tool from the four joint values, being the third joint a prismatic one, while the rest of the joints are revolute joints. The analyti analytical inverse kinematic uh, can have up to two possible solutions with the elbow to the left or elbow to the right, and it's solved in a decoupled way, since the set position and the orientation are controlled directly with joints 3 and 4, while the X and Y position of the robot are controlled with joints 1 and 2. The Jacobian matrix is at 4 times 4 uh, dimension, relating the speeds of the tool with uh, the speeds of the joints. The robot can have a singularity that makes the uh, matrix uh, rank less than 4, which happens when the axes are all contained in the same plane. The Delta robot has a Cartesian workspace that allows the end effector to be positioned from revolute joints, the ones uh, in, the big, in, the, in the fixed frame or in the fixed uh, base. Uh, you can also orient the tool using the last joint. Uh, this uh, or its forward kinematics allows to compute the position of the, uh, of the end effector from the three joint variables and because this robot has three closed kinematic chains, the computation of the forward kinematics is more complex than the previous robots, and it is usually uh, computed using numerical methods. The inverse kinematic of the robots is easier to compute since it can be posed as three independent problems with a single joint variable to be solved in each of these problems, and that can be computed analytically indeed. This robot has up to eight possible configurations as, are, as a result of the combinations of the two possible configurations corresponding to the elbow, elbow out or, or elbow in configurations for each of the arms, but in practice elbow in configurations is not a feasible solution and therefore we can say that there's one unique configuration. The kinematic model of a Cartesian robot is a very simple model in fact, it's linear and totally decoupled. Each of the prismatic joints are directly translated into movements in each of the directions of the end effector, and thus positions Q1 affects to X, Q2 affects to Y, and Q3 affects to Z position of the end effector. Redundant robots are robots with seven or more degrees of freedom. In the case of serial manipulator robots, like the one shown here, we can easily obtain a direct kinematic model using analytical methods such as, for instance, the navier harder method. We will see that. However, we cannot obtain an inverse kinematic model in a closed form, since there are infinite solutions. Usually, numerical methods are used in order to solve this inverse kinematic problem. And these methods are usually based on the zero inverse of the Jacobian. Well, in this presentation, I have introduced Robot Kinematics Foundations. Uh, this uh, will allow us to introduce the maths uh, behind all these kinematic models in the rest of videos associated to this Robot Kinematics unit. Thank you very much.